welcome back to the ANA podcast. I'm Ashley, and today I'm not joined by anyone once again. I'm still in my childhood bedroom, still joined with a dog. Anyway, we'll get some we'll get some more some more faces on here soon. <laughs> but this is going to be another one of the our Bible basics episodes, and I'm super excited about it. At the last at the end of the last episode, wow, I cannot talk. It's obviously getting kind of late. I'm I'm tired. At the end of the last Bible Basics episode, I teased that in this episode, we are going to be talking about five words that summarize all of God's salvation story that's told throughout the Bible. In an upcoming episode, we're going to be talking all about the Bible, but I thought I would give us a little bit of a teaser to that episode, maybe? Maybe? I don't know. Not really a teaser. At this point, I'm just rambling. So these five words have really helped me a lot in how I talk about the Bible. And when people ask me, well, what's the Bible even about? I can whip out these five words and go down the list and tell them about each one. So I hope this is helpful for you too. These five words are creation, fall, redemption, call, and restoration. Now, I know that four of them are pretty common, uh, creation, fall, redemption, and restoration. But one of my professors back when I was at Bible school, Roll conks. Anyway, <laughs> one of my professors actually told us about the call. Like, he added the call in there. I don't know if he that was his idea or if he got it from a book or whatever. So, creation, fall, redemption, call, restoration. Let's run through it. So, creation. This part of the story begins in Genesis 1. God created the world and everything in it perfectly. He created humans, the first of which were Adam and Eve, to be in perfect relationship with him. He placed Adam and Eve in a place called the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve would have everything they could ever want or need. There was no death, no sadness, no, no suffering. So, this was perfect paradise. All was perfect, and he called it good. In the beginning of the Bible, God repeatedly calls his creation good as he is creating it. Being the loving God that he is, God did not want that love to be without choice. That would not be love. It would be coercion or puppetry. He didn't want that. He gave humanity a choice to choose him or to not deny him. This is what's called free will. From creation, we go to number two, which is fall. In Genesis 3, 6, which is literally three chapters after the Bible begins, <laughs> uh, Adam and Eve chose to deny God, disobeying the one rule he had given to them, which was to not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. From that moment on, God's perfect creation was corrupted. Sin, death, and destruction entered the world, and humanity's perfect relationship with God was perfect no more. It was broken. God, being perfectly holy, just, loving, and all-knowing, cannot stand sin. Because of this, Adam and Eve were banished from the perfect garden, and from then on, life would be full of strife, hard work, and suffering. What's more, humanity was to be eternally separated from God, bound to hell for all eternity after death. Because of their sin, humanity needed a Savior to pull them from their sin, the physical and eternal death that had entered the world, and the destruction that they had created. God did not leave them without hope for long. In fact, right after sin entered the world, hope for the world did too. From here, we go on to redemption. So, creation, fall, redemption. Just a few verses after Genesis 6 come gen comes Genesis 3.15, where God first promises to send a Savior to redeem creation from their own sin. Genesis 3.15 says this, And I, which is God, will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. Here, God is talking to the serpent who led Adam and Eve to sin, who is Satan, and Eve, the mother of all living. God is promising that the offspring of Eve will eventually be struck by Satan, which is the striking of the heel in that passage, but the same offspring will end up crushing the head of Satan, leading to his downfall. In the ancient Middle East, the original readers of this text would have read this in exactly this way. The serpent would strike his heel, he would leave blood, but Eve's offspring, which is Jesus to come, spoiler alert, <laughs> which is Jesus, would crush the head of the serpent, killing the serpent. It's a beautiful metaphor. God promises to do this, to crush the head of Satan by sending a savior through his chosen nation, Israel. Israel is to point the word to the coming hope, the Messiah, who is the savior of the world. However, Israel was not perfect. In fact, a 
they were far from that. (laughs) Far, far from that. Time and time again, Israel lived contrary to God. And time and time again, God had to pull his chosen people from darkness to light. The entire Old Testament chronicles this story, the story of God calling his people back to himself and the people failing again and again and again. Yet it is through this broken people that the Savior would come, the hope of all nations whose name is Jesus. The Gospels, which are the first four books of the New Testament, which are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, tell about Jesus, his life. And Jesus is the fulfillment of the redemption promise in Genesis 3.15, way, way back. Now, between Genesis and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament is the entire Old Testament. (laughs) There are a lot of books and a lot of stories about the Israelites failing again and again, but God continually redeeming them to carry out his salvation story back to this. Jesus is God's very own son who left his throne in heaven and entered earth as a lowly baby born into a poor family. And we can tell that because of the, we can tell that he was born into a poor family because of the offering that Mary and Joseph, his mother and earthly father, (laughs) um, were told or brought to the temple, um, after he was born. He lived a perfect life serving the poor and offering hope to all those who would humble themselves before God. Just like God continually called Israel back to himself in the Old Testament, so did Jesus call all people to himself. However, at around 33 years old, Jesus was killed by his own people, the Jewish people, the Israelite nation. The perfect God-man was nailed to a cross, yet his death was not in vain. Romans 5, 8, which is a book in the New Testament, says, Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in the condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in the justification and life for all people. This means that just as through one man, which is Adam, sin entered the world, the redemption of the world was also brought by one man, Jesus, which is so cool. It comes full circle. Jesus' death was the re- restoration foretold all those books, books before. He perfectly took the place we could not. He died the death we deserved. And he rose from the dead three days after being killed, overcoming both physical and eternal death. Boom, Satan, take that. (laughs) The unpayable debt we owed to God was paid in full by the God-man himself through his life, his death, and his resurrection. This is where the call comes in. So we got creation, fall, redemption, and now we're at call. We're just busting through this. Good. Okay, so the call. Through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, he calls us, his people, back to himself. Just like Israel went astray time and time again, so too do we. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. No one is good enough. This is not the verse anymore. The verse is, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. End. (laughs) No one is good enough. All have fallen short. All means all. Every single person. There is no one good, no, not one. (laughs) We have all fallen short and we are all in need of God's glory. And the awesome thing about Jesus is that his blood is free to all that believe. It's amazing. No good deed is enough to reconcile us to God. All need a savior. That savior is Jesus. The foot of the cross is level ground, meaning all are welcome to accept the free gift of salvation and eternal life given by Jesus. God promises to forgive all who humble themselves before himself, acknowledging their sin and need for a savior and turning to Jesus as the one and only way to God. Jesus is the key to eternal life. This key is called salvation. What's more, Jesus calls those who have been redeemed to go out and tell the good news of salvation, which is also called the gospel good news, euangelion. That's Greek. We'll get, we'll get into Greek words another time, (laughs) but what's so urgent? Why do we need to go out and tell others about the salvation that we've received through Jesus? Well, that brings us to the last point, which is restoration. So we have creation, fall, redemption, call, and restoration. So Jesus lived on earth for 40 days after he came back to life. Then he went up to heaven. However, he promised to come back for a second time, which is called his second coming. Whoa, good one. (laughs) Unlike his first coming where he came as a lowly baby, 
Jesus' second coming, coming will be marked with pomp and circumstance. He promises that at this time he will make the world perfect again. The world as we know it will be put to an end and every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior over all creation. Until then, there are many people that need to hear the good news. God wants as many people to spend all of eternity with him as possible. That's why he's waiting until the perfect time to come back to earth, to redeem, to restore, I should say, to restore all of creation. Oh, that was a lot. Oh, I woke the dog up. Sorry, dog. <laughs> that was a lot. Um, but that is the Bible in five words. <laughs> yeah, just, just five words. Um, we're going to be talking about the Bible more in the next Bible Basics episode, and I'm so excited. But if you're, if anyone ever asks you what the Bible is about, you can pull out these five words, which are creation, fall, redemption, call, restoration. The dog says it's time to be done. Anyway, thank you for tuning in this week. We look forward to talking at you next week. Have a great night or day, whatever you're listening at. 